It's always a 10. It's always a 10 when yeah. you when you fire a head coach after a, another winning season. Obviously, they didn't make the playoffs. Uh, they had some unfortunate losses, but you never expect them to make a move like this at a time like this. You know, it's been a pretty stable franchise throughout yeah. his entire uh, career there. And so for them to move on from him without any obvious success or, or any really awful season or, or anything like that is kind of surprising, but it seems like ownership wanted to move in that direction. He was seemed caught off guard by it. It's really sad day for the city of Seattle. It's a sad day for the NFL for, you know, one of the legends of the game, obviously he and Bill Belichick um, parting ways from their respective teams in the same day or the same week mm. is, is insane, but it's insane. <sighs> I, I, you know, he's meant so much to this city and the, the, the way he's changed the culture of not only the team, but the city, the outlook of this team. When we first got there, when he first got there, not a lot of people were thinking of Seattle. Not a lot of it wasn't a big NFL market. No. Um, and there weren't a lot of people talking about, it. you know, they had went to the, the, the Super Bowl against Pittsburgh. But people were thinking about it as, as South Alaska yeah. when I was there, when we first got there. And yeah. by the time. You know, now people think about it as a destination. Guys want to go there. Guys wanted to come play for Pete Carroll. Guys wanted to play on that defense, the, the legendary defense that we had, the legendary runs we went on. Um, it was it was an awesome time. It was an incredible time. You know, one of the only coaches to win a national championship in a Super Bowl. It's 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 been a fun ride to be a part of. It's been a fun ride to watch as a kid. Growing up in L.A., watching the USC Trojans yep. make those runs, getting recruited by Pete Carroll um, when I'm, you know, high school's junior, senior, going to the, the camp. So, you know, I've had a relationship with Pete for almost 20 years now. So it's 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 really an emotional day to see it all come to an end like that. Richard, what was it like when you gathered at your restaurant with with Cam Chancellor, obviously the one you own, your ex teammates, Pete? some of the ex-coaches now, former assistants. What was that gathering like yesterday? Uh, it, was, it, was, it was incredible. You know, I, it, was, it was a lot of emotion. Even some of the current players came. Quandre Diggs, DK, Tyler, um, Charles Cross, uh, uh, Achina. Uh, I, there were a lot of guys. Julian Love. Wow. Um, there were a lot of guys that came by to show their respects, obviously, uh, the veteran guys, Bobby came by, Russell flew into town uh, to stop by and to show his respects to Pete, uh, Sidney Rice, Doug Baldwin, Jermaine Curse. There were a ton of guys, and it was just, it was it was a love fest. You know, it was giving a lot of love. It was Pete, you know, giving some of his his speeches and his jokes and his, his the, the, the things that he says all the time, some of the, the stories that he tells. And it was it was hilarious because you could hear guys quoting almost word for word the stories. And this this is young guys. This is older guys. This is guys guys that he coached 10 years ago or guys that he coached this year. And it was it really just showed the impact that he's made on so many young men, um, the style that he's had, the love that he has from his guys, from his players. Uh, his wife was there. You know, she felt the love, I think, from everyone. And I think it was a, it, it was a fitting moment. You know, it was kind of last minute put together. They called wanted to, to all get together, and guys showed up for him. On a Wednesday night in the middle of the week, um, he's a guy that people show up for. And, I mean, obviously, Russell flew into town for to be able to share this moment um, of closure with Pete and the guys. Tears shed? Oh, no question. It was, it was tears. It was hugs. There were laughs. There were... <laughs> There, there, there was a little bit of fussing. There was talking about old memories, old times, old games, um, old jokes in the locker room, uh, old meetings, you know, things, you know, there's so much history there. Yeah. So there were so many conversations. Um, but the one thing that was evident was that he wasn't done. Really? Interesting. So yeah. he does yeah, want to coach like again, done. be a head coach in the National Football League. He wants to be a head coach in the National Football League, and I, I got a feeling if one of these teams called and interviewed him, he'd be a hard one to pass up because of the way he runs his program. I mean, I couldn't, the, you know, call me crazy, Skip, but if the Los Angeles Chargers called yeah. Pete Carroll, 
that would be a match made in heaven Great point. for a number of reasons. Yeah. But he would get more butts in that stadium than they've had in the history of them being in L.A., which has been a short amount of time. Yeah. He'd change the culture of that program. He would. He'd get these guys playing a way that they haven't played, especially defensively. He'd bring the coaches in. He'd bring the community together. And that's the, the spot I would like him to see, like to see him. But I don't think he's done coaching. I think I expect to see him coaching somewhere else um, in the near future if, if he wants to. By the way, I just had a quick conversation with Keyshawn off air. I just threw out Carolina could do worse than Pete Carroll. I'm just throwing out if, if nobody wants Pete, but you, you brought up a home run situation with the Chargers. But, hey, Carolina, I, I'm just saying – if, if you want somebody to come in and turn your program around, and obviously Pete dealt with a smaller, shorter quarterback in Russ, and now he would do the same with Bryce. I'm, I'm just throwing this out. There are several jobs. We could probably make a case for Pete at, at four or five places. No question. Yeah. No question. He's that type of coach. And, and I, I think, you know, it's just unfortunate. Um, I think – the fans kind of, you know, at least the loudest ones, you know, I think the, the, for the most part, they've been pretty supportive of Pete. They love Pete. Uh, understand he's the greatest coach to ever grace this franchise, one of the greatest coaches in NFL history. But, you know, the, the, the noise got too loud for ownership. I think I think it got too much and, and, and they wanted to, to try something new. I think it's going to be a situation unless they get the perfect candidate, unless they get like a Dan Quinn to come right in. And I think he would steady the ship pretty pretty good and and they wouldn't lose a step and the city would embrace him the city loves dan quinn yeah what he's done but outside of that i can't see a lot of guys coming in and being able to just step in and and not miss a step and not take a step back from the culture and everything that pete was able to build in his 14 years in seattle okay and obviously dan quinn's the defensive coordinator in dallas was his name brought up by the current players at the gathering last night did you hear some dan quinn talk not by the current players, but by, you know, the, the older players, the guys that have played for him. Okay. Um, and the guys, you know, and, and Pete kind of seemed like he, he might feel that way in a, in a way. But, you know, he's still obviously dealing with the shock of this decision. So we try, you know, you know, you try not to bring up things like that when he's, you know, to him at least. But um, there were definitely some conversations where, where guys think that would be the, the, the choice that they would make. Um, it would be the smart choice, I think. On, on, for a lot of reasons, for a plethora of reasons. Um, and I think it'd be the choice that Dan would, would feel most comfortable with. I think this is a, it would be a home run for both sides. Obviously, you don't want to have to lose Pete to make it happen. But no. if you have to lose Pete to bring Dan in, I think a lot, a lot of people would feel more comfortable with that than uh, okay. a lot All of right. other guys. So, so, Richard. You were close to Pete. Sometimes you guys clash because it, it always happens. But the, the point is, right. I, I need you now to explain to people to, to define what was it like to play for Pete Carroll? Who, who was he? What was he as your head coach? Um, he, it, it, if you've done martial arts, he was like your sensei. He was like your master. He's like the guy that, that unlocks the greatest potential in guys in ways that are unique and and out of the ordinary, you know, you, you would think if you came into the building at times during my time there, music's blasting. If you walked into a team meeting, you might see music blasting, guys shooting shots on a basket, you yeah. know, keeping score. You might see Pete playing one-on-one -on -one against one of the players. And you may think, man, how is this guy running this program? And these guys are about to go 0-16, 0-17, whatever the case may be. But it's the way he talks to his players individually, how he cares, how he checks on them how he talks to them during games, during practices, mm. wanting to understand what they're going through, what they're thinking, what they're seeing out there. It's the moments and times where you push and pull, where you poke and prod, yeah. where you go into the meetings, where you have a routine, where you, you know, you have the, the tell the truth Mondays, um, the turnover Thursdays, uh, the, the, the get it right, you know, per perfection on Fridays. Um, you got the walkthrough on Saturdays. You got the, the moments – the, the stories, the things that guys get used to when you go to, to meetings in training camp and going over goal line, the DBs know he's going to come in there and make you solemnly swear that you won't get beat deep on a short yard display. I mean, it's every year. It's a guy that really takes every level of his team seriously. Mm -hmm. He takes it all to heart, and he goes out there and makes sure that he is in tune and in line with everything that's going on and every person that is on his team. He has a story. He has a relationship 
right. with every single person on the staff, every single player on the team. And so when you go out there and a guy rolls the ball out and he says best man is going to play, I don't care if you're a first rounder or undrafted, and you send out 53 guys, mm. then you walk out on, on game day with the best 22 most times. And that's the culture that he built, and that's why we were so special. Man, that was a beautiful breakdown. So I have to ask, did last night the flashpoint moment come up occasionally? Did you talk at all about the Malcolm Butler play that cost you that Super Bowl? <laughs> Skip, that was not part of uh, the, 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 dinner, the dinner table conversation. Uh, not this time, at least. I mean, usually it comes up. I think it's just too much of an emotional day already yeah. on Pete and his family. <laughs> you know, you know, want to bring up stuff like that. That's going that's going to trigger him even more. Um, you know, it won't be the last conversation we have. It won't be the last time we break bread. I'm sure we'll talk about it in the future. Um, we've talked about it repeatedly. I've interviewed him and talked about it. Yeah. Uh, it's one of those plays that you'll never forget. That'll never that'll live in infamy. Um, one of those decisions. I think he'll say. You know, he, he, he'd make again, but, I, you know, in reality, I don't think he would because of the result, because of the situation. Um, but it is what it is at this point. You know, this was one of those moments you just try to try to think about the good times, remember the good times, hug him, love him, try to try to uh, embrace him, try to uplift him. Yeah. And that's what we did. And just for your sake, what is your lingering memory about that play, about that play call? Well, it's just unfortunate. It was unfortunate. It seemed like there was enough time, enough. Uh, we had a timeout. There was a ch chance to just hand it to Marshawn and, and get the win. And I think, the, uh, you know, a situation we could have lived with and, and really slept good at night is if they, they we ran Marshawn three, four times and they stopped him all time, all three times, we would have went to sleep, shook hands, and went home and understood, hey, they, they got us. We, we put our best foot forward. Yeah. Um, and they were the better team that day. But when it, when it happened like it did, it left it leaves so much doubt. It leaves so much to, to chance yeah. and so many questions if you if 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 and you know I'm not if Bayless but you know it does leave some ifs for me too yeah, it does it, <laughs> it does for once you are and just for those who have forgotten <laughs> Russ had just Russell Wilson had just hit uh Jermaine Curse for 33 yards so you had first and goal at the five and you gave it to Marshawn for four yards so now it's second and goal at the one with 26 seconds left so still pretty good time left on the clock. And even though the analytics said that Marshawn during the season had only scored one time in five tries from the one yard line, the, the momentum of the moment, the sort of eye test emotion of the moment would be, we'll just, <laughs> just give it to Marshawn again. He just got four yards, right? No question. No question. That would be the, you know, the logic that everybody else would have been subscribing to. And maybe that's why Pete, through the ball because he thought that everybody would be subscribing to that and they catch him by surprise. Um, yeah. But it was one of those plays that you, you you wish you could have it back. I'm sure Russ wishes he could have it back. I'm sure Marshawn wishes he yeah. could have it back. Pete, everybody. Um, but at the end of the day, that's that's the way history was written. Um, and I still think that that Pete has a lot of coaching left to do. I think he yeah. still has lives left to change. Um, and I, I look forward to seeing if somebody gives him an opportunity uh, to, to do it again. All right. So – as we sum this up, I look back at Pete's last three years in Seattle. So he has a 7-10 and 10 season, but then 9-8, and eight, did make the playoffs, got blown out by the 49ers. No shame there, but really good. And then this year, 9-8 and eight again and missed the playoffs. So did, did that merit or warrant getting fired in your estimation? I don't think so. You know, and that's the that's the problem. I don't think it merit getting fired. Um, you know, obviously you have the Bill Belichick deal out there in in, in New England, and you just could see things kind of deteriorating, things going downhill, things getting worse year by year. Absolutely, I don't think you saw that in Seattle. I don't think you saw things deteriorating, getting worse year by year. I think they had some unfortunate losses. I think the two losses to the Rams were very tough because if they win either of those games, um, they're in the playoffs. But I think this was was management just just really letting the outside noise get in um, the outside noise get to them. Uh, they, they ignored it for a number of years. I thought in 21 when, you know, there was the drama between Pete and Russ and, yeah. and which one do you keep? Which one do you go? I thought, you know, maybe they make a decision then. But after going to the playoffs, you know, having his team another winning season, you, re you rarely fire coaches after a, a winning season, especially legendary coaches 
one of the greatest coaches of your franchise. And I think no matter how it goes after this, you know, this will be a decision that people look back on and say, man, was, I, don't, I don't know if that was necessary. Well, especially if Pete goes somewhere else and wins big again, uh, it, it won't look so great for the current Seattle ownership slash management. So, Richard, no great job. Beautiful insight. Appreciate you. Love you. We'll see you soon back here at the desk. And I know it's a tough day for you up in Seattle. Tough. It's tough. Appreciate you having me on, Skip. I appreciate you guys uh, letting me give Pete his flowers today. You know, one of the greatest coaches them. to grace yeah. the NFL, a special human being, um, a culture changer, uh, uh, one of the legends in the NFL. And I'm, I'm grateful for my time in Seattle. And I'm sure all the other guys speak the same. Well said. Thanks for watching, Undisputed fans. Do you want more highlights from the show? Make sure to click that subscribe button for all the exclusive content from Undisputed.